Okay, hopefully, um, there's a, hopefully, as I shown tonight, we're gonna finish Parak Yodalif. Uh, I've been on this for many months, um, not in a bad way, uh, but, but uh, it's uh, hopefully gonna be time where we finish it up tonight. Uh, the Parak has been talking all about uh, Nikias and about perfecting oneself in, in uh, mitzvahs and one's character traits. So we've been focusing the, I don't wanna say the latter half, really, it was probably like the last quarter of the parak. I've been focusing on midos. And tonight and is the last mida we're gonna discuss, which is the mida of kavod. Kavod is something that uh, really, really drive people to do ridiculous things. Um, and it's also something that plagues almost, if not literally all of us, uh, all people at either often or certainly maybe not to the highest degree, but as we'll discuss and see what he says, he'll be able to elaborate a little more. So he says, Yesera Allah das hakavod, even more difficult than the previous media we discussed is the mida of is the desire for kavod. I see he spoke about a desire for money, a desire for taiva. He says, even more, a greater desire for people is kavod. Because it's possible for a person to overcome their yitzahara when it comes to money to realize, no, I don't, I don't need $10 million to be satisfied. I think be okay with a little less. And it's possible for a person to um, overcome the yitzahara for certain pleasures that they want. But sometimes it could be that kavod is what drives the person and is the real, the fuel in the tank that pushes a person to do things that are against or either that might be against their voice Shem or certainly might make it much more difficult uh, for them to fulfill Torah mitzvos. It's sometimes a per, it's impossible for a person to tolerate viewing themselves as lower than their contemporary. Right? If you think about just uh, the World Series finished up yesterday, so if you think about baseball, so oftentimes the manager makes it pretty clear who the best batters are and the worst batters are based on the batting order, right? So imagine, let's take where the pitcher is the ninth, right? But imagine that guy who's batting in the eighth, eighth spot, right? Imagine how he feels. But I guarantee you, like if it wasn't for that, or if it was maybe the, the leadoff hitter, the person who's playing cleanup, or the person who's five or six, maybe they'll say, you know, I'm just as good as them. I'm just, I'm just getting the not being, um, I just have to work on hitting the curve, right? I have more power than them, right? They might focus on one thing, but it's very hard for a person to, to totally view and be objective and say, you know, they're better than me. That person deserves a lot more than me. Very hard. The Aldavar Zen Nishlu Rabin Venebdu. And over this, many, many people stumble in and have been lost. There's as many have stumbled in and fallen. Hine Yerevam, now he's going to go through examples in Navi. Hine Yerevam ben Nevat, lo nitra ne olam haba ele bagwar kavod. Yerevam was a Russia. But Yerevam had the opportunity um, where, I'll, I'll explain the story, then we'll read it. But basically, Hakash Baruch Hu said to him, like, how about, how about we go? Me, you, and David Amelech take a nice stroll in Olam Haba. Like, work on yourself. Me, you, and David will be in Olam Haba together. So, yes, he says, who's in front? Who's walking by? Who's walking first? Me or David? Hashem says, David. Hashem's like, nah, I'm out. That was it. Crazy, right? To lose, to decide, you know, it's not worth changing my ways. It's not worth doing Cuba if there's going to be someone ahead of me. Wow. So, Hashem grabbed onto his cloak and right tugged at his shirt and said, We're going to take a stroll. Amarlo Mivarosh says, Who's going first? Amarlo Ben Yishai Mirosh. David, right? David Ben Yishai. David. Is going to be walking in front of you. If that's the case, I don't want it, right? To be able to throw away your opportunity for Olam Haba, 
right? The ultimate pleasure, the thing that we spend our entire life, uh, our life's work to attain. And he doesn't want it because he's not going first. He's not going to be the president of the club. Who caused, what caused Korach to sin? It was the Kavod that he wanted, right? Korach was driven by his, by his desire. And even though the other 250 men with him, and then there were even more than that, but the original 250, he said, it's all, it's for all of us. We're told by the, by Chazal, it's actually, it was really just Korach was, he needed people with him to get this going, but he just cared about himself. And that like he also is it not enough? Is it not enough for you? They also like also get the kahuna. That meaning Korach, you have you are a prominent lady. Now you also want to be the Kohen. Isn't that enough, right? I mean maybe if you're Israel, okay, I can understand a complaint or two. But you're you're a prominent hush of lady. He saw his cousin, Elit Safan, become the Nasi. And he said, I want to be the Nasi. Who made him the Nasi? And he thought also, I mean, that Moshe, though, that it wasn't fair if you fall down the lineage, really it should have been me and not him. Moshe is the one who picks, not him. That, that, was, that was his downfall. And um, and uh, that's why everything everything fell um, everything happened with him. That uh, that when it came to the Miragam, so in general, most people, the most classic of their sins is they spoke lashon hara, of course, about the land of Israel. They forgot about Hashem, that Hashem could kill those giants that were there and they didn't have to worry. But here there's a, there's a, there's a Zohar that explains that when they spoke Lashon Hara and they caused death, basically their whole generation to have to die out in the in the Midbar, it was all because of the, the Kavod. That they were concerned that maybe these Nisim, that if when they got to Israel, it's going to be a whole a, a new uh, new group of Nisim that are going to be taking over. And they didn't want to lose their position. So that once they went in, that's probably going to have to happen. And that's why they tried to get the people to not go in. All for that. All for their kavod. We consider the, the, the Nisim. Because Amma is still Shaul, the rogue El David. Why did Shaul? And it's interesting that uh, here the point of point seven goes through how Shaul actually became the king of an Israel uh, because of, but certainly one of his great qualities was actually his humility. And he said that at his inauguration, he was hiding in the crowd and he didn't want to, he didn't want all the fame and the covered. But what ended up happening is he got used to it, as he's going to say. And, uh, and it got to his head. David because of says in that um, these women were uh, were saying that Shaul, you know, you may have killed thousand, but David he killed ten thousand, and by he Shaul oyenes David mayom hakuvahala. And Shaul hated David from that day on. The fact that David would, had, was given a greater praise than Shaul, Shaul felt he had to eliminate him. Me garam lola oya. Sorry, let me uh, let me actually just uh, continue that that point that I was saying before about Shaul, who who initially was very humble. So point out over here that even though he ended up he ended up um, his downfall ended up becoming because of Kavod, that he wanted to wipe out David because he was given more Kavod than himself. But it points out that no one is immune for, from Kavod. That once someone gets a little bit of it, that it'll, I would say, always go to your head, but it's very difficult to, to escape. And when a person gets it, it's hard to not want it, not continue it. 
And so Shaul, before he had the cover, before he was king, he was extremely humble. That was great. But then once he was used to the kavod, he couldn't part from it. It points out that's one of the reasons why kavod is so dangerous. That certainly, even if someone doesn't have it, they want it. Right? Imagine if Ami had the opportunity to become CEO of the company. Great chashav, remember me, please. Um, but everyone, want, I, want, I want to be the, love to be the head of school. I definitely don't want the responsibility of the head of school, but I'd love to be the head of school, right? Sounds like a good title. Um, and so people, when, when you want it, and even if you're like, yeah, I don't need that, but like once you get it, it's very hard to, it's very hard to shake it off and to remain extremely humble. So, mi garam lo le oya le yoav, sorry, le yoav shiamis es amasa, what called, what caused yoav to kill amasa, ala kavod. David praised person Amasa and he said, you know, you should be my, my general. And Yoav, who was the general, heard this and he's like, oh, no, no, I'm the general. I'm the guy in charge. He's out. And Yoav killed him. So we see from all these examples, here's, here's the klal, here's the rule. Covered is something that makes a person it like transforms their heart. More than any other desire in the world, a person can't think straight and a person will have such a passion to run after Kavod. But Lulei Zen, if it wasn't for this, if it wasn't for the desire for Kavod, and here's uh, one of my favorite parts of tonight, where he says, if you think about it, if a person, like kind of, here's the way he's phrasing is, what would the world be like if nobody cared about Kavod? Would it be the exact same, right? You still have to have CEOs, still have to be in position, right? There still has to be those positions. What would the world look like? What would people, how far would people push themselves? So he says, if it wasn't for this desire, a person, when it comes to the food they have to eat, would be minimal. I have some bread. I don't need such fancy food. I don't need to, right? I don't need to say like, oh, I got the most expensive meat for Shabbos and grand in essence, right? It's like, no, I'm fine with whatever, whatever keeps me alive. What comes to the, the clothing, right? Does a person need the, the fanciest suit? Does a person need the nicest shoes, the nice belt buckle, right? Cool, cool glasses, right? Expensive glasses. So it says, you know what a person would need? Anything that covers their body, that's the clothing. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter how expensive it is. Whatever, whatever, whatever it is, that's fine. How would a person live over their house? Like, person would live in a place that shelters them from the elements outdoors. I don't need uh, a mansion. I have a mansion. I don't need a six bedroom and a full... Master, master bathroom, right? Like with three full bathrooms upstairs and two downstairs and this, I don't need that. I'm fine. I'm fine with just like a simple house that will keep me insulated from the elements and just be fine. It says, Vahaisa Parnasoso Kalalav. When it came to making money, it's not that here, like you kind of like it's easy to him. It's easy for him. It's that it's something that he doesn't care about the desire to make so much money. It's light in his eyes. Like, I don't need so much money. Kalalav. It's like it's light in his eyes. I don't need to work hard, extremely hard to become rich. I don't need to push myself to work all these overtimes and to, and to kill myself on weekends and check my email every, every second of the night. Someone may have come, man, if I need to, I need to impress this person. I need to I need to work. I need to work, of course, but for my bear, for my necessities. I was like my bear for my necessities, whatever I need. That's it, right? And just reading this paragraph, it's like it's amazing, right? Because this is really where we're able to be introspective and say, you know, like they're definitely obviously. Before I say the the negative about about say about myself, obviously things are expensive, and obviously, right? We're Sometimes we get used to a certain lifestyle, push it, of course. At the same time, when you read this, you realize like, yeah, maybe there is a component that is related to Kavod. 
um, for myself, there for sure is at times things related to Kavod. Um, it continues. Ella, so the vilti reos atmo shuffled pachos mireyav. He says, rather, in order, sorry, in order to see yourself lower than your friends, machnis atmo ba'avia kora hazos, the aim kates a cholamelo. Meaning, he says, like a person doesn't want to be lower than their friends. A person wants to have the fancier food the nicer clothing, the bigger house, the nicer car, the higher position, the highest salary. And because of that, it says there's no end to the amount of work that we have to put in because of the desire for cover. I have, I'll tell you about a, a, a colleague of mine who, who uh, he has three kids all in their I think all in their 20s, if not the oldest, might be 30. And he lives in an apartment and has lived in an apartment for decades. He even told me that his kids, and I could, I could understand that, like he said his kids were too embarrassed to have sleepovers to bring friends over. So they didn't want their friends to say, like, oh, you live in an apartment, like, who doesn't live in a house? And he said to me, he's like, it was fine. We didn't want, <laughs> we didn't need company anyway. <laughs> but but in a certain sense, I'm, certain, I'm envious of him to a certain extent. And he's even told me, he says that like there are people that work crazy, crazy summer jobs and like meaning people in education, people who have summers off, but like, and they work crazy summer jobs so they have to keep up with all these things. And he's like, I'm able to relax in the summer because we're able to sacrifice certain things, certain luxuries in order to just have a normal, stable, relaxing life. And obviously like people will look at him and look at maybe his apartment and they see his car and they say, oh, like, wow, your life must be really tough. It must be so extremely difficult. And he's like, I have everything I need. I have an apartment, a place to live, I have a car that drives, like, I have a job, fine. And it's like, it's really an amazing thing. And, um, and I've learned, learned a lot, learned a lot. Um, Al Kane says, therefore, Al Kane Amru, Rab Sam Zachron, the Brahman, Perkeabos, Hakina, Bakaiva, Bakovo, Moti, and Saada Mina Olam. Right? So, all these were discussed in this parak. And uh, the three things that remove a person from the world, and the last on the list is, is Kabul, that could remove a person from this world, or a person could be so focused on the desire for Kabul, they, they forget everything else. Kamahim Shemis Anim Berav. Right, he says, how many people endure hunger? And how many people, unfortunately, let's say they're in a difficult financial situation, unfortunately, certainly right now during COVID, this is even more relevant, right? How many people are in difficult financial situations and they lower themselves to ask to get tzedakah, to take charity from the community? And instead, you know, they could, they, they lost their job and it's tough to, to get a, a, a real legitimate job now. And they decide to ask Tzedakah from the community when, you know, they could actually maybe deliver sandwiches for chickies. They could work behind the counter at Glad Express, but they can't apply for something like that because it'll be a shot to their ego and the fear that their cover is going to be lowered. And they ask, when they get stuck in the community, nobody knows except that person who runs the stuck organization. Everyone else thinks they're fine. Maybe they know the lost their job, maybe they don't. But uh, to be the delivery boy, imagine, how could someone order chickies and I bring it over? Like, right? He continues, says the Ramchal, is, is there nothing more foolish and crazy than this? For a person to rely on stuck up from the community because they're too embarrassed to take a job that they feel is lower than their dignity. And even more than this, the batala from just like wasting all your time and not doing anything because I can't take that job, 
it will potentially lead to a lot of sins. Um, Batala, just being bored, I'll just translate it as boredom right now. Being bored is one of the, is a very bad and dangerous trait. Um, and being busy, my Ravi used to tell me many times, uh, being busy is a great thing. Um, whether it meaning even busy, let's say in the summers, I'm busy playing golf. So I'm busy playing golf. I have time on the course. It's not, it might not be the most productive for a Los Hashem per se, but when you're just sitting at home doing nothing, you're like, oh, there's nothing to do. So that is uh, is much far more far more dangerous. All right, let me uh, I think today's game would be good. Uh, I, I was stopped uh, in the middle of the sentence. Bleed day, gazal bleed day, cold, goofy, I've ever sold leaf all these types of things. Sol hashpil my lesson, my love of Azos, Odom and Baduma. All this because they won't lower themselves and put themselves in a situation that's a shock to their ego. The Amnam says, however, Chachamenu, obviously, uh, I know you guys are there and listening. Obviously, if you have any questions or comments, as always, you can always feel free to. Um, the Amnam Chachamenu, Zechron, Levracha, Amar, sorry, Levracha, Asher, Horunavid, Rechunu, Tameh, Bedarche, Emes. The Chachamim, they always teach us the ways of Emes, the ways that we, the proper conduct of a person. Amar, they say, Ehoves, Hamalacha, Us, Na, Es, Harabanus. Um, which means you should love doing work. You should love being busy. And it doesn't mean hate the rabbis. Um, it's not what Sona, it's not how rabbanus means, but it means to hate. Uh, the word rabbanus literally means authority. You should hate positions of authority, meaning you should like turn away from them. And um, there are people, there are plenty of people, like I've met people in my, uh, my field who have, turned down or have told me that they would not want to be the head of school or the assistant principal or the head of this is the amount of just stress and continual work that goes into it. It's just not something that they're looking for. They're satisfied. They want to be already. And that's fine. That's great. The Umroad says, That one of the, one of the lowliest jobs was to Take a dead animal and flay the skin, flay the skin off. Gavarabba ana kahana ana. A person shouldn't say, "How could I do that?" I'm a chashu person. I'm a kohen, right? A person shouldn't say that. The Amru Od says about Basra Kofiyodam and Alf Laolam Yavod Adam Avoda Shizara Lo Yali Tzarech Labrios. That tied to the the previous one of the previous ideas that he was saying about uh, lower oneself to a job and not and the. Uh, or a person's willing to take tzedakah from the community than taking a lower job, he says, the Gemara says specifically, a person should do something, even if it's like unusual for you to do. Yeah, there are not so many people who go to Avat Shalom who are cab drivers, who are Uber drivers. But you know what? You should better to do that than to rely on money from the community. Now it's and to need other people's help. Now he's going to start Wrapping up this part and uh, then wrapping up the paraklal hadvarim. A kavod who min hamachsholos hayoser gadolman shaladam. Kavod is one of the greatest stumbling blocks to people. The e of shalo the yot eva neman the kono kolzman shu chasat kavod atah. Because it's impossible for a person to be a true evan Hashem if you're always if you're worrying about your kavod. Ki al kol pani mistarach the mayit the kavod shomayim bnei sechlito because it'll inevitably happen. You're going to have to override Hashem's kavod in order for you to not lose out on the kavod you want. We're learning uh, my class, I teach a class on Hasidus, and we're learning a piece from Svas Emes on the Parsha, where, where he discusses that when it comes to Lech Lecha, so Hashem didn't reveal to, to Avram where he's going to go. He says the idea of it is for Avram to be totally mevatel to Hashem, that to really just say, like, nullify yourself and to be willing to totally listen to Hashem without knowing anything. Meaning that if Hashem told him, go to this town, go to this state, go to this country, okay, like at least he knows where he's going. But say, just go. So for him to be willing to go is to be like the opposite of someone who has covered. Right, a total unknown to be willing to say, yeah, of course, whatever Hashem wants, it doesn't matter. 
I don't even understand it. I don't even know where I'm supposed to go. Of course, I'm going to do it. Says, David Amel says, I should be even more humble than this, and I should lower myself in my own eyes. David Amel was, was speaking to his wife, where when they were bringing, bringing uh, the Aron, so David Amel was dancing in front of it, and he was dancing wildly. And his wife was saying, is that the way for a king to act? A king has to be dignified. The mouth says, I should humble myself even more. I wish I could humble myself even more and I'd lower myself even more for the sake of Hashem, for the sake of dancing in front of the arm. Of course. Now, covered amiti. So, what is true kavu? Meaning, a person, like we're saying, certainly shouldn't run after higher professions, run after the money, run after nicer clothing. So, what, what's, what, what deserves, though, kavu? I mean, that's why they do it for kavu. So what gives a person kavod? True kavod is knowledge of Torah. says in kavod el Torah explicitly. Shenamar, Pesach Mishlei says in Gimel Lamed Hey kavod chachamim in chali. To inherit, to kavod is uh, the ways of the chachamim to be able to getting learning Torah. So, any other cover the person gets is really false. It's not true cover. Right? To uh, honor someone for being for being a person who's able to take a round ball and put it through a hoop because they're six foot eleven and they're fast. They're they've been working on their dribbling skills. That's the person who gets the most covered in the world. They're a person who's able act really sad and you know what they might get an Oscar for acting so sad in a movie wow that person deserves so much cover right now I'm guilty potentially like you but I'll speak of myself I'm guilty of giving them cover and looking up to them I am guilty but he said but let's put it in perspective that that's not cover it's not real cover it's fake have the that's emptiness there's no value in that for real it says someone wants to be real naki, nakiyos, to attain this in all areas. So you should be matzah, you're able to, to do it. So we've spoken up until this point about many different details about nakiyos. And this model that we've been discussing applies to every single mitzvah. It says, let the wise one hear and increase his learning, and, and the discerning one may acquire strategies. The last paragraph of the parak, it's exciting to say. It says, I can't deny that there it definitely requires work to be to attain the meat of Nikias. To be totally, totally get rid of a sin. Not just where you don't want to explicitly, explicitly do it. You don't even you're so careful about not getting even a shemitz of it, not even getting a drop of it. Even though it's tough, he says, Apple PK no marini, she ain't sorry clock motionary. Says it doesn't, it's not as hard as it seems. I don't think it's impossible, right? There are plenty of times, let's say I personally have had anxiety many times. I've seen a psychologist and have spoken with my psychologist a lot. And uh, I can tell you from firsthand experience with anxiety, anxiety comes and tells you that certain scenario, oh my God, do you know how, I'll just use literally what has happened. Like, oh my God, when I get up and speak in front of all these people, I'm gonna throw up, it's gonna be terrible. I'm not gonna be able to speak properly. It's gonna go awful. It makes it out to seem impossible. How's this going to work? How's things going to be? And then it almost, the what happens, almost never ever lives up to that fear. It almost never does. So like, yeah, okay, I got a little nervous. Maybe at first my speech stuttered a little bit, but then I was fine. Like I was under control. I was able to deliver. I definitely didn't throw up. Definitely didn't feel that, right? So, so to hear he's saying, yeah, it might seem like a daunting task to achieve Nikias. But it's not as difficult as you think. 
It says, Vahshava Vadavar, Hazeh Kasha Minamaisa. The thought process of this is actually much more daunting than the actual, than actually carrying it out. Kikasher Yasim Ha'adam. Because if a person really, really internalizes and decides to drive themselves to attain this midah, then you're going to come to accustom yourself to all the proper ways. And it will become much easier than you could have ever imagined. He says, this is something whose truth is proven by experience. When you actually go through it, you'll be able to see that what I'm saying, what I'm saying is true. And with that, I'm happy to say we conclude Perak at Aleph. Now, even though the next Perak is still about Nikias, it is certainly not going to be, uh, is actually a really short Perak, um, but that's just more about how to acquire Nikias because we've been doing, discussing the Mida and then about how to acquire the Mida. But the Shanis Baruch will do that 